everybody. This is Lady Ashley here. Thank you so much for tuning in to our broadcast. Do us a favor, and could you please like, comment, and share this message? Come on. Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. And it reads like this. Let us not get tired. Oh, my talkers are here now. I feel like preaching. Let us not get tired of doing good. For we will reap at the proper time if we don't give up. My last verse, verse 10. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us work for the good of all, especially those who belong to the household of faith. Repeating after me, circumcise my ears that I may hear you. Tenderize my heart that I may receive you. Focus my eyes that I may see you. Diminish the distractions so that I may perceive you. Deal with my doubts so that I can believe you. Awaken me to your word that I may live for you in Jesus' name. Come on and say amen. Without exerting too much energy, just turn to your neighbor and just say it nicely to them. They hop. And I don't want them to get an attitude. Just say, hey, neighbor, don't get tired. Getting physically tired is inevitable and even more of a reality to those who work hard. Being tired is an indication that you need to get rest. Uh, however, the Bible outlines a few things we cannot get tired of doing. Uh, though physically being tired signals the need for rest spiritually, if we get tired of doing what is right, we will end up being on the wrong side of God. Uh, if, if you're a realist like me, there are times I don't feel like forgiving. Okay, right side is going to talk to me, so I'm going to preach to y'all. Uh, Cause I like to be real. Uh, I don't feel like forgiving. Uh, uh, there are times that I don't really want to turn the other cheek. Come on, overflow, talk to me. Uh huh. I'm saying Jesus. Now listen, I ain't got no more cheeks to turn. Uh, uh, but 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 in all actuality, uh, there are times that me, the prophet, the pastor, I want to get my lick back. Okay, I, I want to get with the get back. Uh, there, there have been times in my life that doing good didn't feel good. Uh, Y'all still warming up? Uh, uh, there are times that helping others left me depleted. And, 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 and I, I said, God, I, I didn't do everything right, but I decided to help, and my decision to help left me depleted. It helped me wanting. It helped it had me lacking. It had me in a situation where now uh, I help the other person fill the void in their life, and now I have a void. Mm. Uh, uh, there are times that I did the right thing, but don't feel any more anointed. Oh, y'all don't want to be real here. Uh, I did the right thing, Jeff, and I don't feel any closer to God. I did the right thing, and I don't feel any more blessings. Tanisha, I did the right thing, and I thought the door would be open, but I'm still standing in the hallway. Mm. Uh, uh, I prayed, I fasted, I prophesied, I, I danced on it, I, I gave on it, I sold into it, and still there are times that I feel like it's not going to happen. Y'all don't want to be real today. Uh, I prayed the prayer of faith. I prayed without wavering, and I believed without a shadow of a doubt, and God still didn't do it. Uh, but I come as a prophet today. Somebody say prophesy. And the word of the Lord to all of those that are in the same situation like me is don't get tired. Uh, without knowing your whole life story, I've been commissioned today to preach to you as I preach to myself these words. Do not get tired 
tired. Uh, when you start to get tired of doing what is good and right, something is off. Uh-oh. Uh, I'm going to deal with it. Uh, that means something is off in your life. When you, when you get sick of doing what is right, when you get sick of doing what you know is good, when you get sick of doing the thing that God has told you to do, that means in your life something's off. Mm. Uh, when you start to get tired of doing uh, what is good and right, uh, you must now think of, here it is, the command. Point number one, uh, the command. In order to do the command, we must understand the command. Y'all heard it before. Uh, but the command isn't don't get tired. I don't want you uh, to, to mistake me. I just gave that to you as a, 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 a little, uh, you know, a little segue into this. Uh, but the command is not, is not don't get tired, hear me, uh, but rather the command, Taja Taylor, is don't get tired of doing good. Mm. Uh, uh, I heard a man repeat to his children uh, one time, and he said, do good every time. Yeah, uh, this is the reality of what God is asking of us. He's not asking us not to get tired uh, because that's the reality of always being in a battle. That's the reality of always doing good. But he says, don't get tired of doing good. Uh, and when you get tired of doing good, that's when you know you have an issue. Uh, it's not that you get physically tired from working 40, 50, and 60 hours. It's not that you get tired of always having to fight. It's not that you get tired of having these financial battles. But Steve Zion Gray, it's about you always wanting and willing to do the right thing. Uh, our focus must be on doing good, not 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 just this this nebulous thing that we call being good. Oh, I think I'm a good person. No, uh, if you are a good person, you will do good things. Oh God, yes, Lord, Mother Mamie. If if you are a good person, you will do good things. And the reality is, God has awakened you at 2 p.m. for me to tell you that it's time to do the good thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've been doing uh, what we seemed as right in our own eyes, but no, now we need to find out, does my life align with the word? Now, uh, I must tell you here that, that uh, God, when he gives a command in scripture, it means he has already equipped his audience with the ability to do the command. Mm, Uh-oh, let me help you out. Cause some of you, how, how am I going to do good? Here, here it is again. Uh, when God gives you a command, he has already given you the ability, oh God, to do the command. I'll say it one more time. Uh, when God speaks to you and says, go do it, he's already given you the ability to do it. And see, a lot of times we're missing seasons because we don't realize in the prophetic word was the ability. It was the power to do exactly what God said. Uh, let us is what the text says. I got to move a little quicker. Let us. Uh, he includes himself in this. And I want you to hear that this is not a word of exclusion, uh, but this is a word of inclusion. Yeah, you got to include yourself in the us today. Uh, when it says let us do good, you got to realize prophet talking to me too. Prophet is talking to my kids. Prophet is talking to my family. We need to join in this doing and this doing good. Mm. Uh, let us, he includes himself, I love it because this is the Apostle Paul writing and he doesn't say that I'm above you, he does not say that I'm an Apostle, he says you know what, I'm in the same boat as you, let us uh, uh, getting tired of doing good has the possibility to possess any of us uh, he says let us because even though he's an apostle and he's seen the Jesus, uh, he saw Jesus after the resurrection with his, his eyes, guess what? He still has the possibility to be possessed by this spiritual tiredness. And I want to let some of you know, because I know you got a little zeal and you in the right place with God. I want you to never forget that there is a possibility that you could get tired of doing good. Mm. Oh, I don't do this anymore. I don't do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the reality is uh, this is not a sprint. It's a marathon. And it's not that I can just do good in this season and then fall off again. No, I got to do good in every single season. I got to do good when I feel like doing good and when I don't feel like doing good. Good, 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 good. Okay, so so, so he says, let us, uh, but then he says the words get tired. I had to break it down a little bit. And, and God, we don't start off being tired. Uh-oh, here's the revelation. He says, don't get tired uh, of doing good, but the reality is in God, we don't start off tired. So there's something 
something that happens along the way. I ain't got no church now. Uh, there is something that happened between when I gave God my life the first time and today. Uh, there was something between my baptized, my baptism in the Holy Ghost and where I stand and sit today. There was something that took place in the interim. And that thing has caused me to get tired. Uh, uh, so if you find yourself getting tired of doing good, uh, you might have to change some stuff around. Uh, 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 one of the suggestions that I have for you today, and I'm not going to give many, uh, is that you have to get rid of the people that say things like this. It couldn't have been me. You better than me. So what they're doing is they're trying to weigh down your, your being and doing good. Uh, and they're trying to influence you that there is a season that it's okay to not do good. Y'all don't hear me. Uh, if it was me, I would have cussed them out. If it was me, I would have. See, the issue is what they're trying to do is influence you not to do good. Mm. And so I, I suggest that you got to get rid of the bad people so that you can continue to do good. Uh, all I'm saying, uh, once the command is given, uh, the responsibility is yours. Uh-oh, I'll say it again because I think Elder missed it. Elder, once the command is given, the responsibility is yours. Okay, okay, all right, here it is one more time. Uh, so when God speaks to us, the command, Mayel, what happens is now the responsibility of the command is on me. And so if I do not fulfill the command, it's not God's fault because he already gave me the, oh, y'all mad about responsibility, uh, because he already gave me the ability. So now the responsibility, ability, responsibility, the responsibility is on me because he gave me everything I needed to do it. But point number two, uh, uh, number one was the command. Somebody say the command. Uh, but point number two, watch this, is the crop. <laughs> uh, there, there's not just a command there is a crop I'm preaching better than you responded uh, however God doesn't give us a problem without a promise uh, uh, you sitting in the wrong spot okay so so the reality is he gives us a command uh, to some of us we'll see that as a problem but he does not just give us a command hallelujah without a crop attached to it uh oh so when I do good then I get something in return I know that we're not supposed to serve God to get stuff but the reality is a promise is a promise and so anytime he puts in front of me a problem anytime he puts in front of me a task he has attached to it something uh, for my good. Uh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And so in other words, he doesn't give us a command without a uh, without the covenant of a crop. Can I say it that way? Uh, whenever he gives me a command, he gives me a covenant of a crop. Oh, God, I'll say it real slow for you. If you do good uh huh, and you keep doing good uh huh, and you don't get tired of doing good, watch the word you will reap. See, Y'all not excited about it because it's a responsibility. You thought that it was going to Uber Eats its way to your house. Uh-oh, Cherie. I guess it's just me and you now. Uh, 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 <laughs> my church left me. It was good when I was reading and everything. It didn't left me. Hey, Serena, I, th I think it's just going to be us now, me, you, and Cherie. All right. So, so the reality of this situation is that I will have to now get my crop, right? We dance about harvest. We praise God that we have seed in the ground. But in order for me to get the fullness of my crop, I have to reap. <laughs> I have to do the work to haul it on in. And if there's anything, now some, some of y'all women in here, so y'all understand, one thing y'all like to do is shop, right? So think of this cropping as a shopping. You get to go to the field and every seed that you planted, you get to now shop and pick up the crop. Okay? So if you do good and you keep doing good and you don't get tired of doing good, you will reap. So then let me make a suggestion. Can I suggest to y'all something today? Uh, doing good is producing a crop for you to reap. Uh-oh, here it is. Uh, so he says that if you, you, you do the good, you will reap. But he doesn't tell you what you'll reap. But we understand that he's speaking in a metaphor. What else would I reap? I'm going to reap a harvest. I'm going to reap a crop. And so in other words, even though he said reap, inside of that promise, if I open it up, it means that there's something that I need that I will be able to reap. 
Mm, mm. Uh, uh, if God promised that I'll reap, that means that he's going to provide for me a crop. Oh, God, y'all missed it again. Uh, if I'm going to reap, I'm not just going to a field with nothing in it, but he's going to send me to a field uh, where there is a crop. Oh, I missed it again. So in the reality of my next season is not just me going to the field, not me just showing up, not me just doing good, but I will reap. Oh, y'all don't see the season that's coming for Great Awakening Church. It's reaping season, yeah. We done prophesied about it enough. We done invited enough, but now it's time. Uh, oh, I got, I got to get through the rest of it. It's time to reap. It's time. Turn to your neighbor and say, it's time to reap. Uh, now, I want to, y'all sit down. Reaping is a spiritual law. Uh, yes, Jesus. Y'all trying to push me, but I got, got, I got to teach y'all the spiritual part of this too. Reaping is a spiritual law. What is it? Reaping is a what? Yeah. Uh, uh, so you reap, watch this, what you sow. This is where Mother Mamie gets happy. Uh, because if I sow good seeds, I reap good crops. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. See, so, some of y'all ain't been reaping good. I can tell now. So if I've been sowing sin, guess what I reap? <laughs> so, so you reap, watch this, what you sow. So I do not sow in, in tears and not expect to reap in joy. Come on, that, that is, is the same thing. Uh, I, I don't sow pumpkin seeds and expect to receive apples. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh, so you reap what you sow. So if I sow a pumpkin seed, then I reap pumpkins. If I sow tomato seeds, <laughs> I reap tomatoes. Yeah, yeah, some, some of y'all there. But if I sow gossip, uh-oh. Uh, so, so another part of this spiritual law of reaping is the seed is always smaller than the crop. Okay. Uh, 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 so, so here it is. The seed is always smaller than the crop. Y'all missed it because y'all still now evaluating what you sowed. Y'all like, hold on, wait. Did I, did I sow? Hold on, wait. That time I done, I did that. Oh man. Uh, but, but the seed is always greater. The seed is always smaller than the crop. So in other words, let me say it in church language, my harvest is always greater than what I sow. <laughs> uh, so here it is. Watch this. One pumpkin. I, I was doing some research last night. One pumpkin seed can produce multiple pumpkins containing hundreds of seeds. Hold on. Wait a minute. One seed produces a pumpkin one pumpkin seed produces a pumpkin and if anybody ever you know carved a pumpkin i know y'all don't celebrate halloween i hope but yeah hallelujah <laughs> but but inside of that pumpkin you know black folk don't go pumpkin picking but <laughs> hallelujah we got some white people here today <laughs> hallelujah uh, but but inside of that is now multiple seeds. Hold up. This is why the scripture is true. He gives seed to the sower because inside of that thing that I'm cropping and harvesting is more seed. And when I open it up, it's going to have more than what I sowed. So then I was like, okay, well, let's get a little technical with it. So I said, a cherry tomato, it has a seed. And it can produce a crop, a harvest. But I, I said, let's go a little deeper. How many seeds, how many, how many tomatoes can a cherry tomato seed produce? And, and Google told me that it can produce 80 or more, which all of them have seeds. Hold up, wait a minute. Some of y'all didn't know where to get excited. So you mean to tell me, prophet, I can sow one seed and reap 80 times the harvest? Because I did what I sow. Oh, I'm teaching you how to be good now uh, because before you go off on them, you need to think, hold up, wait, what am I sowing? Because I'm going to get it back. Some 30. Uh-oh, let me do a Bible way. Some 60. Okay, I got some Bible readers in here. Uh, you, you always get more than what you give. This is why you have to give what God calls good. We got to stop giving what we feel is good. Uh-oh. I think I think I done, I done snuck back in into somebody's business. That's $75. That's good. But but you hit the number. Why are you only giving the church? Okay. Uh-oh. And I ain't moving either. Come on here. I got another 20 minutes. So I ain't moving. 
When I, when I hit, I'm going to bless the church. And you hit. Come on here. All right. Ain't nobody talk to me. I don't know if I'm in now, last week, or in the future, but come on. Now pay your tithes first next time. Hallelujah. Sitting there scratching off. I see you at the desk. You ain't even go to the car. Just. But this is why you got to do <laughs> what God, somebody say God, calls good. Because the principle, and I've already said it, so I won't spend much time here, it works both ways. You mean to tell me that I done cussed people out, slandered their names, and you, you don't think that God is going to give me any of it back? Now, now watch this, because I said that wrong, actually. God is not the one who gives it back. He puts a spiritual law in motion. Okay? So God is not holding me to the ground right now. Gravity is. It's a law that was put in place. Let me, let me clarify it. And so when he puts laws in place, he allows those laws to begin to work. Right? And so since we are spirit people, spirit being, we have a spirit, he says now you are governed by the law of the spirit. This is why Jeff Bezos is doing good because he's suffering and now he's reaping. Oh. <laughs> See, biblical principles don't only work for people in church. Oh, so y'all don't listen to no millionaires, obviously, because uh, every time I listen to the millionaire, they talk about giving charitably. That, that's tithing. OK, you, that, that's tithing. That's giving. And so they understand that I got to give a certain amount because what it's going to do is it's going to bless my money. It's it's the calendar uh, uh, because this is where. Uh, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, the Lord be giving me funny scenarios. Some of y'all know when to look at the calendar. You got the date circled and then you got to have a conversation. You say, I'm late. What, what are you talking about? You talking about the calendar? Ash Marie eyes are so big. <laughs> you looking at the calendar. Come on here. And if if we if we want to just be all spiritual, oh, oh God's ways. No, no, no. Sometimes I'm looking at the clock and I'm saying, God, the first is here and I ain't got it all. <laughs> OK. <laughs> and now you got between the first and the tenth to work a miracle, God. Oh, y'all don't want to be real. <laughs> and, and, and really, God, I need two miracles. OK. Yeah, yeah, all right. Listen, yeah. <laughs> you stay seated. I'm about to preach the last point. Uh, and, and so at the proper time, somebody say the proper time. Uh, God has a calendar, and there is a proper time singled out for reaping. Oh, God. Uh, there is a specific time on the calendar of the believer that God says they will reap if they faint not. They will reap if they've been sowing good seeds. They will reap if they've been doing good every time. When, when talking about proper time, the Greek said it this way. Uh, Y'all know I like the Greek. The Greek said the season, I mean, I quickened all in that prayer chair, the season assigned to an event. Hold up, wait a minute. So I know people love to talk about chronos and chronos and all of that, uh, but y'all know I'm not the regular preacher. The reality is when you look at the meaning of the word that is translated proper time in our text, it's the season assigned to an event. Y'all missed it. I'll say it again. That and I'll tell you why you should get happy. There is a season assigned for me to reap. There is a season that God has already planned that I will reap. If you've been sowing good seeds, this is where you can now praise God because the reality is that I know that there is a season assigned to my life. Oh God, he wouldn't have put it in the word if it wasn't so. And so the reality is all I got to do is live, live, live. Because if I continue to live, I will see the season assigned to my harvest. Mm. It all works together. Come on here. Uh, I got the blueprint. I understand the life that I got to live. And now as I'm doing good, I'm doing good looking for a future reward. I've, I've been sowing good seeds. Uh, so this is where I can now get excited uh, because, Harmony, it has not happened yet, uh, but there is an assigned season. It has not happened in my now, but there is an assigned season. Uh, and I can get excited because I know that whenever God makes a promise, he never lies. Uh, I ain't going to go into that. Uh, point number four, and I'm done. Here it is. Somebody say the clause. 
Oh, uh, there's not just a calendar. Uh, there is not just, oh God, yes, Lord, a command. There is not just, uh, but, but there is now a clause. Somebody say a clause. Uh, the, the clause is, here it is, I defined it for you, the condition or stipulation attached to an agreement. And this is why some of y'all weren't getting excited because you understood that there is going to now be a stipulation tied uh, to my reaping. There is now something tied to me reaping all the benefits and the blessings from God. But it does not matter because there has been a season uh, assigned to my harvest. Uh, I'm ready now uh, because if you don't give up, oh God, Micah, it says it here in the text. It says the clause is, come on, that if you do not give up, oh God, you will reap. And so I'm not mad uh, about the calendar, yes God, and I'm not bad mad about the command. I'm not bad about the condition. All I'm doing is trying to make sure I understand the clause. And so the clause, Ricky, is my responsibility. I said it multiple times, but I want to give it to you straight up and honest. Uh, the clause is if you don't give up. I didn't say obey today at all. Uh, if you don't give up. Okay, I'm trying to get it in your spirit. Uh, it's still on the first layer. If you don't if this is the clause to every miracle, every blessing, every harvest, everything that God has promised me. I cannot, I cannot give up. Giving up is not an option. Great Awakening, everybody. This is Sister Ash Marie. If you would like to sow, the information is down below. I promise you, you'll be blessed.